Alright, so I've been getting a lot of comments and messages lately about this one effect in specific. Literally almost half of my comments are asking for this one effect, and it's called something like the transformer transition effect. Now I had no idea what all these comments were talking about at first, simply because I'd never heard of this effect before. But after doing a bit of research and looking online for this effect, I found this one account on Instagram called Jerry Media. And after scrolling on his profile for just a few seconds, I finally found the effect. And after watching for the first time, it was actually mind-blowing. This was one of the coolest car effects I've seen in a minute, but there was still one problem. I didn't know how to actually replicate this effect in After Effects. But luckily, I saw that Ryan posted a tutorial on how to create this effect in Final Cut Pro, and since I know how to use Final Cut Pro pretty well, I was actually able to learn from his video and try to implement most of his effects into After Effects. So after messing around in After Effects for a few hours, I had finally created the Transformer effect. So as you can see by that video, the effect looks pretty similar to Jerry Media's, and I think it actually turned out really cool. But with that being said, let's go ahead and get started with this tutorial. Now obviously the first thing you want is two different clips, so I have this footage here of this one car, and then I'm transitioning to this other one. And ideally, you want the two videos to be kind of similar, so you can see the angles and the car placement are pretty much the same here. But once you get them to look pretty similar, this effect will just end up looking a lot better. Now the first thing I'm actually going to do is create a clean plate of the background here. So I'm going to be removing the car and just having a blank screen of our background here. So what I'm gonna do is go to the end of the frame here on my first clip and make sure that this marker is hovering over it and go up to composition, save frame as file. And then you can click on the output here and rename it to whatever you want. And then I'm gonna go here to the output and then change this to PNG still, and then just click render. Now do the same thing, but for the other clip, you wanna get the export for the first frame here. So make sure the marker is hovering over that and then go back to composition, say frame as file, and you should see this new output here. And you just wanna go here and make sure the settings are the same as our first one. And then once again, just render that frame. Now I'm gonna be using Photoshop for this, but there's a lot of other things online that you can use like AI editing tools. So I'm sure you guys can find something. Dolly 2 is a great one. And and it's actually free so if you don't have photoshop then i'd recommend using that and if you don't know how to use photoshop you just want to create a new file and make sure your width is the same as your after effects composition and then just drag in your exported frame into your photoshop here and i'm going to be using this lasso tool here just creating a rough outline around the car and then i'm going to generate a fill this so go here and then hit generate and you can toggle through the arrows here to kind of find a frame that looks the best i think this one looks pretty good so we can go up here and hit file and export and once you've exported that frame you can go ahead and import in your new one so here's the other one that we exported out and i'm just going to go ahead and do the same thing for this and this looks good so i'm going to go ahead and export this as well so once you have this frames exported you can go ahead and close photoshop and go back into after effects and then you just want to import those frames back into after effects as well and I'm just going to drag over this image here onto our footage and I'm just going to have this image last for 20 frames so holding down shift and the arrow key I'm just going to click this twice so it skips 10 frames each time and I'm just going to split this layer now let's go ahead and bring on our second generative fill image here and then going back over 10 frames so in the middle of this image here I'm going to bring this one over and then we can just trim it at the end here and then bring our footage back over here so that it lines up at the end of those clips so now you can see we have something that looks like this. So obviously this is looking pretty weird right now, but this is kind of the foundation of the rest of our edit. So with our first clip here, let's go ahead and duplicate this by hitting control D and bring this above our frame layer here. And I'm gonna right click this, go to time and click freeze frame. And we can trim down this layer. So it's only starting here and then drag this layer out 10 frames. Now let's go up to the pen tool and we're just gonna have to go around the car here, creating different masks around different objects here. So the first mask I'm gonna do is just around the front of the car here. So now you can see we just have the front of the car here masked out, and we just need to go ahead and mask out other parts of the car now. So just duplicate this clip once again, and then hit M to bring up the mask and go ahead and delete that. So now we have the car back here. We just need to go back up to the pen tool and just keep selecting out different parts of the car here. If I was doing this effect, I'd recommend selecting like the wheels, uh, the front of the car like I did, and then also the windshields and maybe kind of the back area of the car here. If you want to get super detailed with this effect, you can mask out like the headlights and stuff, but that's just going to take extra time so i'm just going to be masking out just a few of the parts here all right so i just went through masking out different parts of the car here as you can see when i'm clicking on different layers you can see the different parts that i have masked out so i have this back wheel here the back area of this car kind of like this door i guess here another wheel the windshield and then the front area of this car 
So once you have that, you can go ahead and move on to the second car. So I'm gonna duplicate this layer and make sure you're on the first frame. Right click this, go to time and hit freeze frame. Now we can drag this layer all the way over here and trim this down so it's not overlaying with our actual footage. Now we basically just need to replicate the process that we just did here by masking out different parts of the car again. And what I recommend doing is kind of matching what we did for the first one here. So masking out the front, the wheels, and like the back area. So basically if you do that, then it's gonna look more seamless in the transition. So I just went ahead and masked out the front of this car that will kind of match the front of this right here. So hopefully that will kind of look pretty seamless in the transition. All right, so now I have all of my layers here masked out. I pretty much tried to copy the other car here by masking out the wheels, the back of the car, this door here, the windshield, and then also the front of the car. So once you have those two clips masked out, we can go ahead and start animating this. So on our first car here, let's go ahead and select all of these layers and hit P. This will bring up the position here for all of them. And let's go ahead and set a keyframe for all of these clips here. Now let's go five frames over. So in the middle, we can go ahead and just drag out some of the parts here and then go five frames back over here and then bring these parts back kind of towards the middle here so now your keyframes should look something like this so now on our second car let's go ahead and open up the position again set a keyframe for the starting value here and just drag these keyframes over to the end and what i'm going to actually do is drag these layers over our first car here now you can see the different layers and i'm just going to try to match up the layers with the different sections of the car so now it looks something like this so let's go ahead and bring these keyframes back over here and trim this back down. So now you can see the match cut is pretty clean. And then let's go five frames over. So in the middle of our second clip, let's go ahead and just bring these parts back out like this. So now you can see we have the basics of the animation, but we need to go ahead and smoothen out some of the keyframes here. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the keyframes on our first car and just hit F9 on the keyboard. And if you don't have that, then you can always go here and right click your keyframe, go to keyframe assistant and easy ease. And I'm just gonna go ahead and do that same thing for these other ones here. So now you can see those movements look a bit smoother. Now let's go to the effects and presets and search up transform. And we're just gonna drag this onto one of our layers here. And I'm basically just gonna be creating a shake onto our different parts. You can go ahead and use like S underscore shake if you want, but if you don't have a plugin like that, then you can go ahead and use the default transform here. What I'm gonna do is hold down alt for the position, which then brings up the expression for this. So inside of this, I'm gonna delete this and enter in wiggle. And inside the parentheses here, I'm gonna enter in six comma 55. And for the scale, let's go ahead and hold alt and then click on that stopwatch again, and then enter in the same expression. Let's do wiggle and let's do six comma 25 for this one. So now you can see that part just wiggles around a lot more than the other ones. So let's go ahead and just copy this transform by hitting control C, selecting all of our other ones and just pasting it as well as our second car here. And then you wanna make sure you have motion blur enabled for all of these clips. So just go here and just pretty much select motion blur for all of these and make sure motion blur is enabled for your timeline. Now, depending on how much you want those different parts to shake, you can always go back to the wiggle here and change the amplitude, but I think it looks pretty good for this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and keep that. Now this is kind of optional if you want, but I'm actually gonna add in a car frame. So I have this image that I downloaded from Google and it's basically just a frame of a car here. Now, obviously it doesn't look exactly like the car that I'm using, but it's kind of just gonna be in the background so you won't really see it as much. And I just went ahead and dragged this layer to the bottom of our different mask. And I'm just gonna scale this up a bit. And I think it's actually pretty bright, so I'm gonna go ahead and apply tint to this. I'm gonna map the white to black here and then change the percentage down to like 35%. And then I'm just gonna keyframe the scale here to kind of scale in at the start. So I'm gonna set a keyframe for the starting value, pretty small, so it scales up. And then for the end, I'm gonna have it scale back down. Let's go ahead and enable motion blur for that layer as well. And I'm actually gonna copy this transform or the shake effect and bring it onto our car frame. So I'm just gonna paste it here, but it's way too strong of an effect as you can see. So I'm gonna have to adjust it a bit. So I went ahead and changed the expression for the position and the scale here. So you can go ahead and copy those if you want. And I think that just looks a lot better. And in that Jerry Media video, he has some sparks. So I went ahead and downloaded some sparks overlay. I'll also have these assets available down in the description below where you can go ahead and download the car frame as well as the sparks if you need them. So yeah, once you have those downloaded, you can go ahead and drag them into your timeline. I'm just gonna bring the sparks to the bottom of my timeline as well. And then for the overlay, I'm gonna bring this to screen and I'm just gonna trim the layer down here. And I'm just gonna copy the transform or the shake effect here to the sparks and then enable motion blur. So it has a little bit of a movement to it. So as you can see, it's looking pretty close to what the effect is supposed to look like. But what I'm gonna do next is animate the background in for the second clip to kind of seamlessly transition in. So for that background layer right here in the mask tool, I'm gonna go up to the pen. And I'm just gonna outline the ground here. So now you can see I just have the concrete. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this again, delete the mask 
And now I'm just going to select the like grass or whatever this like dead brush is in the background here. And let's go ahead and duplicate that again. Delete the mask. Now we're going to create one more mask and this is going to be for the sky. So now we have a mask for the road, the grass, and then the sky. And I'm just going to select these and open up the position for them. Now let's go ahead and select all of these frames here and just set a keyframe at the end. Now we can go back to the start. I'm going to start with the street layer and drag this down. And then the grass here, I'm going to drag this one down as well. And then for the sky, I'm actually going to drag this one up and I'm going to select all these keyframes and then easy ease them. And then selecting the frames here for the first layer, I'm going to go into the graph editor and then create a graph where it, where it speeds up towards the middle and then slows down towards the end. And if you don't see this graph, you just want to make sure you right click this and select auto select graph type. And I'm just going to go ahead and copy that graph for the rest of these frames here. So now we have a super smooth animation of the background. Now I'm just going to go ahead and pre-compose all of our layers here into one single layer. So right click it, pre-compose, hit OK. And then a frame right before this animation starts, I'm going to hit Control Shift D, which is going to split the layer. And then I'm going to go to where it kind of ends. So the animation right here, split the layer as well. And I'm just going to go ahead and enable motion blur for all these layers. I'm going to go ahead and apply some shake. You can use whatever shake you have. So you can use Sapphire, which has the S underscore shake, like I mentioned earlier, but I'm just going to be using my own shakes for this. So I'll have them linked in the description below if you want to go ahead and download them. They're super easy to use and they're pretty simple. So once you have them downloaded, they're just going to be in the animation presets right here. I'm going to try using the shake one right here. So I'm going to drag it on and that already looks a lot better. So I think I'm going to use that for the first one. And then for the second layer that I split, I think I'm going to try using the shake Y and rotate. So just drag that on. And there we go. Now that we have the shake applied, everything just kind of blends together and just looks a lot smoother. And once you've done that, you're now finished with this effect. Now I have a feeling that this tutorial ended up being a bit longer than my other ones, but hopefully you guys enjoyed this longer video and it's kind of helped you guys learn this new effect. And also shout out to Jerry Media for actually giving me inspiration to create this effect in the first place. He has a lot of other cool effects on this page, so I'd highly recommend checking him out. And if you guys see other effects that you guys want me to do tutorials on in the future, then make sure to drop a comment down below. But that's going to be pretty much it for this tutorial if you guys enjoyed it then make sure to drop a like and subscribe to my channel and i'll see you guys on the next one peace out